Hi all. Recently a friend gave me this power supply and advised me to convert it from 12 volts to 9. I thought about making a video. This is a valid topic. Many need to lower or increase the voltage of switching power supplies, but some don't know how to do it. And so I thought to show this extensive topic of disclosing this power supply. In principle, all power supplies are made the same way. It's just that their circuit changes a little, and the type of voltage stabilization for many is the same. To achieve the desired voltage, we add one resistor and rewind the transformer. There is nothing complicated there. Well, now you can see for yourself. This is what the power supply looks like up close. Like many power supplies of this type, it was non-separable. Its covers were glued together. Therefore, in order for me to disassemble it somehow, I had to use a hacksaw, saw it on all four sides, then pry it open with a screwdriver. It is small in size, about the size of a matchbox. And the power is pretty good. The output is 12 volts with a current of 1.25 amperes. The spread of supply voltages is also impressive from 100 to 240 volts. There was still adhesive tape on the case, which I wound after sawing the power supply. Now let's open our power supply. Let's take off the lid. This is what the board looks like. And then we pull out the board itself now. In general, everything does not look scary. I unsoldered the board from the power supply cover. Now let's take a closer look at it. Here everything is according to our standard plan. Fuse. Input capacitor. Common mode choke. High voltage capacitor and diode bridge. Together they make up a rectifier. Rectifying alternating current 220 volts to direct current 310 volts. This is a PWM chip that controls the transistor. Next comes the blue capacitor from common mode noise. There is the same one near the transformer. Next to it, a black square is an optocoupler. This square is a transformer. This is the diode at the output of the transformer. There are two capacitors and a choke. Let's turn the board over and see what's in there. Lots of SMD components can be found here. It's hard to make out in the video, so I'll show you in the photo. Here's the board in a clearer version. On the right is the high voltage part of the power supply, and on the left is the low voltage part. We will work with her. We carefully look at the fee. We are interested in this black thing. At first you might think that this is a transistor, but it is not. In fact, this is a controlled Zener diode TL431. This is a chip. We are used to seeing her in the 292 Stern. And here it is in the SMD package SOT23. It controls the output voltage of the power supply. Now I will explain how this happens. Here is a typical TL431 connection diagram and its strapping. The two resistances on the left R18 and R10 form a voltage divider from which the signal is taken to the microcircuit. To change the ratio of the divider, we need to add an additional resistor. If you put it in parallel with R18, then the output voltage will decrease. And if R10 is parallel, then the output voltage will increase. 
In order to make it more convenient to connect an additional resistor, I will solder it with a wire to the voltage divider. Here in this place on the board. By the way, I forgot to tell how the power supply worked before our alteration. I connected the power supply to the network and connected a multimeter to the output of the power supply. There is no constant 12 volts at the output and the tension is constantly jumping. I connect a light bulb that consumes 90 milliamps. And we look at the voltmeter. The voltage has stabilized. We turn it off, the voltage jumps again. The voltage at the output of the power supply jumps because it is a flyback converter. The fact is that without a load at the output, it does not work stably. The generation breaks down and therefore the voltage constantly jumps. To do this, usually in such power supplies, some kind of resistor is placed at the output, which will serve as a load on the power supply. But naturally, the efficiency of the power supply changes from this, since the resistor consumes the power of the power side. As an additional resistance, I took a 150 kilo ohmum resistor. First we poke them to minus and the voltage rises a little. And when we connect to the plus, the voltage drops to 10.4 volts. This is not enough for us, so let's take another resistor, 10 kilo ohms. Also, first connect to the minus, the voltage grows more. And then to the plus, the voltage drops to 9.6 volts. But again, this is not enough for us. We take the following resistor. He is now at 82 kilo ohms. First, we also connect to the minus and then to the plus. And we see what happens. The light starts flashing. The voltage jumps. Chip generation is interrupted. Of course, you can close your eyes to this situation if you connect a more powerful load. Also, for interest, we first raise the voltage. It works stably. Now let's lower the voltage. As you can see, our voltage has dropped to 9.14 volts, and it does not jump. Yes, it was possible to do with this option with a large load, but I do not like it. I want to connect some small load, and so that the voltage does not jump. So, I decided to rewind the transformer. First, we solder the transformer from the board. We remove the yellow tape that holds the halves of the heart. We put the transformers in boiling water, and after a few minutes we take it out. We take a thin knife, preferably a terminal one. We put it between the halves of the core and carefully separate them. We remove the tape. Under it, the first winding is waiting for us. This power winding of the micro circuit. We rewind it. Next comes the primary winding. We rewind her too. And then comes the winding that we need. This is the secondary winding. She goes with a thick wire and she has a few turns. We rewind it and count how many VTUCs there are. I had 15 turns in it. This is equal to 12 volts at the output. And we need to make 9 volts. To do this, divide 15 by 12 and get 1.25 volts per turn. Then we multiply this figure by 9 and get 11.25 turns. It turns out in the new secondary winding there will be 11 turns. We wind our new secondary winding. Behind it, we wind the primary winding and the power supply winding of the microcircuit. We wind the insulation between the windings with ordinary tape. After assembling the entire transformer, solder it to the board. After some thought, I decided to take an additional resistor Ishe-less at 68 kilo ohm. Now the block check. Under load, the voltage is also 12.2 volts. 
First, we connect the resistor to the minus for interest. The voltage rises to 13.50 volts. And then to the plus. The voltage drops to 9 volts, and the light does not blink. The voltage does not jump like last time, until the transformer was rewound. Now let's connect more light bulb and see how it holds tight. Let's connect a resistor. The voltage remains the same, about 9 volts. Now let's connect the load even more powerfully. Together with an additional resistor, the voltage is kept at a level of about 9 volts. After we made sure that everything works, you can solder an additional resistor to the board. One foot to the plus, the other foot to the voltage divider TL431. We put the board back into the case, and on this, the modernization of the power supply is over. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel, put likes. Be sure to ask questions if something is not clear to someone, and bye-bye.